Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, today I've got a couple of Sauvignons. I have got Sean Smith from Adelaide Hills, uh, 2014, and I've got Vechelecken Sauvignon uh, from Scharfenberg Vineyard in Stellenbosch, 2013. Uh, so I'm going to do the younger one first, not least because uh, it's only 12% alcohol, whereas the other one is uh, weighing in at 14% alcohol. So I'll do the Sean Smith first. Well, it's, um, it's just coming into the Australian spring now, and a wine like this will just be coming into its own. Uh, here in an a, uh, autumn day in, in, uh, in the north of England, it still smells nice and uh, sappy. There's a citrus character, uh, there's the, what they call the greenness, uh, so the things like the cut grass, a little bit of the nettles, but it's more this exuberant fruit. And uh, I, it actually smells quite a bit more forward than I was expecting. I was maybe expecting something that was a little bit uh, not coming out to play for another couple of months, but um, um, makes me wonder whether, because the fruits, uh, fruit smells really juicy and ripe, uh, makes me wonder whether at 12% alcohol, whether there's going to be a little residual sugar? Let's have a see. No, there isn't any residual sugar there. It's bone dry, clean, keen and um, not mean but uh, not lean it's got uh, it's yes it's, it's lovely clean fresh sappy flavors um the backbone of acidity a uh, little touch of the stoniness in there uh, the mineral character but wrapped around it this um ripe citrus fruit and it's not the it's not the uh, those juiciest citrus fruit it's those ripe lemons ripe limes um, and just when you think it's uh, th those characters are going to maybe rough up your mouth a bit too much with their fresh perkiness, uh, then there's a little bit of weightier character that, that comes through and um, smooths and soothes your mouth. Oh, you know, I do like being soothed and smoothed by that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's see how we get on with the Bechelecken. Uh, so a year old up, 2% more alcohol, give it a whirl. And this is a different beast. It's richer, fuller, toastier. I think what you're seeing here, well, I suppose three differences. It's the, it's the older style, so not only a year older, but it feels more confident, feels more, uh, confidence the wrong word, it feels, it feels uh, more relaxed. Uh, whereas the first one's uh, slightly perky and sort of, uh, this one is just relaxed a little bit into its armchair. Um, you notice the extra presence of the alcohol. Um, and um, so, um, it, and it's giving a, a richer, um, fleshier style of fruit. So it's maybe not on the citrus. Maybe it's more on those green gauge. And um, yeah, getting into not quite passion fruit, but something slightly uh, exotic in there. Uh, and the other thing I notice is that um, it's this is South Africa rather than uh, uh, rather than Australia. So. Uh, I think of sometimes of, of South African Sauvignons uh, as having not quite as overt fruitiness as New Zealand and Australian Sauvignons, uh, but maybe a little bit more earthy, flinty character. Uh, so let's see where that comes through when I taste it. Darn satisfying drink that. Richer, weightier than the, uh, the Sean Smith ones, uh, was. Um, and um, yeah, with this extra weight, you feel the presence, you feel the extra maturity, you feel the 2% more alcohol, and these richer flavours uh, that are, will make it, in terms of food uh, partnerships, you, you'd want uh, maybe some goat's cheese or something and uh, uh, some shellfish with the first one. This one has got quite a bit of oomph to it, and uh, you think, actually, this is a good take on uh, some uh, uh, really quite hefty tuna and... Uh, Maybe even chicken and uh, and stuff like that depends what it's what it's cooked with. Uh, but in terms of, um, of flavours, uh, yes, it's got um, it's it's more maybe more going on beyond the fruit here than than, than was in the Sean Smith. So I get that earthiness, that um, uh, a sappy. Uh, yes, there's the cut grass character, uh, but there's also yeah an earthy undercurrent. Um, not so much the flintiness that you you get in in the Loire, but there is a an undercurrent of stoniness here. Um, which do I prefer? I like them both. I think they're, they're good for different occasions. This one is probably more the winter Sauvignon, the other one's the summer Sauvignon. So uh, if you're in the wrong hemisphere, you're just going to have to buy a round the world ticket and uh, if you prefer one to the other and uh, or maybe buy a bottle of each and if it's summer, pretend it's winter or vice versa or maybe I should shut up and go and have a glass of one or two or both of these. Anyway, see you soon.